Att nu ger landen Att väga skröda Och att lacka och sunga Väl höll väl Guys, I think we're live. I think we're here. I think everybody can see us. Um, those of you out there watching, please let me know if I'm vastly delusional. Um, welcome to another 3B Radio actual play live stream. Tonight we're doing episode 41 of our Land of Ice and Snow, uh, which is a D&D 5th edition uh, campaign set in an alternate history, uh, 11th century Europe. Um, we've been following a party of adventurers as they wander through the Nordic lands in search of uh, honor, glory, and most importantly, trying to stop the cult of winter from bringing about an endless snow-filled hellscape. Um, after summer in Miami, you might take the snow. Um, to, go, to go on a little faster, I'm actually going to go ahead and do everybody's introductions tonight. We are, uh, so up in the top left-hand corner, we've got Davius. Davies is playing Delvin. Delvin is, from birth, an inquisitive uh, furbolg in every sense of the word. And as he grew, his, the consequences of his inquisitive nature slowly became more and more dire until finally the elders of his village decided that to prevent political uh, fallout, they needed Delvin to go be inquisitive fucking somewhere else. Uh, after, <laughs> after dumping him aboard the SS Ask No Questions, they, uh, Delvin ma ran into the current party who has just expanded his inquisitive nature to all sorts of topics, whether it's anatomy from Neferet Set, uh, business from Kasim, uh, how not to be stealthy from Mug Magni, or all sorts of other things. Uh, Delvin is now learning how to hunt things other than prey. Uh, <clears throat> down in the bottom left, we have Stewie. <laughs> Stewie is playing Igor, everyone's favorite uh, manservant, artificer, uh, gentleman's gentleman, the butleriest of butlers. Uh, he is a patchwork man. You can see he's got his father's eyes. Oh, no, sorry, his grandfather's eyes. Uh, or at least one of them, his father does in fact have the other one. <laughs> he's wandering about with Gregor, who is not here tonight, but... Gregor is a mage, usually played by Sergio, whose pride caused him to fall and become cursed in something that the party still doesn't quite know what happened. But after shattering his staff, he ended up in a time loop before he found his way here. Next up in the bottom right, uh, we have Ogmagni, the man of many titles, first of his name, king of the Andals. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ogmagni is a paladin of Thor, a an oath of glory. He seeks nothing more than to find the largest thing in the in the Nordic lands and headbutt it to death with his bare hands. This is the only way that he will be able to find his way to glory and become a god in his own right alongside Thor. Something that is not only inevitable, but coming soon. Blizzard TM. <clears throat> Up next, we have Ashlyn, everyone's favorite fae. She's not here today, but she is a druid from the Celtic lands. Uh, half druid, uh, half elf, called a she, who has an inherited sword that everyone insists she stole and is just now starting to find out exactly how complicated her family tree really is. Uh, then in the top left-hand corner, we have everyone's favorite legitimate businessman, Kasim, known to some as Ibn Jabel, a man who's had to reinvent himself three times in three different criminal organizations, and each time he grows only that much bigger. The way he found himself to our party is that in his last criminal organization, they decided that he was entirely too honest. They stabbed him a bunch of times, threw him on the SS Ask No Questions, and he found these people. Did I miss anything? <laughs> uh, oh, no, that's right. We don't have another uh, character from what's his name. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had a whole thing. I was going to tell you guys a little bit more about the world. I wanted to give, start giving you guys facts about the backstory, but we're fucking 30 minutes late, so that shit's just not happening tonight. Uh, so in our last adventure, you guys had just finished defeating Somat, son of Eddie, the terrible... Uh, 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 Patent thief who just wanted to monetize other people's uh, inventions. Something that would never happen in How reality. How could anyone do that? That's uh, uh, <clears throat> so evil, so despicable. You have drug him over to <clears throat> the uh, the 
High Council of Guild Masters in Tinkertown, and you are now standing in a room that is only six feet tall and has about a hundred gnomish uh, people sitting in chairs. Uh, Delvin, I assume you just shrank a little bit. Uh, Ogmagni, you are hunched over quite a bit. Uh, as you bring Somat up, everyone cheers for you. So they say thank you so much for... for for having protected our our inventions, how, I I don't know how a gnome could fall so far from the ways of Tinkertown. It's absolutely despicable. Do you guys have anything that you want to say to them? <coughs> oh right, sorry. <laughs> so the guild master, the the, the the high guild master, who is a man who. After dealing with the dwarves, you used to people of, of respect having these like long flowing beards. The high guild master has his goatee trimmed super tight, and it's clearly greased down. Okay, and he walks over to you, his apron clanking with tools, and he hands you a pouch of gold. How much? He says, eighteen hundred gold. Oh, thank you. I'll oh, have this on? over. Here you are, sir. Uh, so you <laughs> actually hadn't agreed to money, I don't think. You had, in fact, agreed to banking rights and things of that nature, as well as an espresso machine for with, your new branch. With the oh. gnomes. <clears throat> However, we did agree yeah, to he... money with the 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 guild yep. of the... Uh, please let me know what that money is, because we all know Kasim wrote it down. <laughs> I was about to say. <laughs> I want to see if you get away with this. I thought you really didn't remember. I thought you remembered and we're just trying to see if he did. Because I remember the conversation and I knew he had it written down. I'm double checking here, actually, because... Yeah. Because there was... Didn't you... Don't you remember haggling about us not being uh, part of their guild, the Adventurers Guild? Oh, so we yeah. shouldn't get the right prices? Oh, yeah. Yep. Alright, well... Uh, I'm, I'm going to hand wave and say that he gave you the appropriate amount. Uh, so when you find it, Kasim, let me know what it is. Will do. Um, he also says... Uh, so. A a small gnome with a black Van Dyke and a green apron with a mermaid patch on the chest walks up to you and he says, Don't worry, boss, we'll get that espresso machine installed right away. Uh, thank Nurgle. <laughs> thank Nurgle? Did you just say that? Yeah. Do you do you really believe any other of the chaos guys is responsible for Starbucks? <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. I mean, Slanesh, right? Okay. Slanesh could totally be the coffee person. No, no. don't don't put that on us. Right? <laughs> don't put that can, on us. And I could see mm. Zinch or, awesome. or even I could see Zinch. because of all the rage. That you okay, can your name Zinch wrong. maybe, but but uh, that is that's so nerdle. So look, the minute that somebody said a, a the smallest drink is a tall, you knew Zinch was like good. Good. <laughs> 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 Would you like a tall, a grande, or a venti? <laughs> Like, literally, the only one that doesn't mean large is the biggest. Let's be clear. <laughs> that's just some American shit. Anyway. Uh, that's some American shit. So, you guys, you guys go that's back and high. forth. You talk to them. They, they, they give you the things that you need. And <clears throat> what is next for the, for the party? All right. Well, we met with all the gnomes. <clears throat> Uh, I'm basically still waiting to hear back from the Igors, because I don't know if they know what time period I'm in. But that's another question that we never really answered. <laughs> you actually like, ha I'm going to say that you have not heard back from the Igors in the four months that you've been with the party. Really? That's not good. Interesting. Be made cornbread. Ah. Delicious. What's your address again? <laughs> What's the address for the Igors? Cornbread and chili is no, what we got today. For the cornbread. I mean, <laughs> for being, uh, for being and and Rurik. So <laughs> for the cornbread. you guys, um, yeah, you haven't gotten any new letters. You haven't gotten anything of that nature from the Igors. Although, you notice that nobody in the party has gotten letters at all, except for Kasim. <clears throat> Interesting. I wonder why. <clears throat> well, I know why I haven't gotten any letters. You know, tampering with the <laughs> mail is a federal offense. So. I like that the lawful good paladin automatically assumes that someone's being shady. <laughs> I uh. I mean, I'm just waiting for a bird, anyways. So. 
So I'm, Igor's going to go off and I'll make my own little like annotations and things like that with Gregor. Uh, ba basically, it'll be like Igor like slightly tugs on Gregor's uh, coat and Gregor goes, oh yes, we have something to take care of. And then I follow Gregor. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make up another letter for the Igors okay. and I'm going to ask Kasim, our esteemed colleague, uh, how much it would cost for him to guarantee a letter makes it to uh... what, what's uh, Romania right now called again? Carpathia. Carpathia. Um, so as you as so uh, as you guys are like discussing mail, a young dwarven woman, or a teenager, like runs into the middle of the group, looks at Gregor, and says, "You, you're required at the temple immediately." After you, sir. And I guess Gregor and I will head off to the temple. And then she points at Oak Magni. You are also required, but less urgently. I will walk slower then. And then she held her <laughs> out her hand. Hmm? A messenger. Oh, oh. This is a collect call. Uh, it's a collect call. <laughs> COD. <laughs> I shall. No, I'm gonna say, and Og Magni offers her a tail to to sit. No, not, that's not a good tip. All right, here's a piece, <laughs> two pieces of. No, uh, I don't know. Give her. Here's a copper kit. Don't, don't spend it all in one copper. place. I don't have... Give her two pieces of silver. She'll be fine with that. All right, there you go. Two pieces of silver. You give her two pieces of silver. She tosses it in the air, catches it in her pouch, and gone. You're pretty sure. That before she was a legitimate messenger, she was definitely a thief. Uh, she's talent that Cardin's going to be talking to later. Uh, I'm going to drag the entire party to the temple. Uh, you guys, you guys now have right. papers right. that let you go through the middle point uh, unbothered because you are. Oh, they know me. Uh, yeah, they do. Uh, they know me. At this point, everyone in the city knows you, and it's not because of your deeds, just because you won't stop talking. They about know it. me at Donner's Ward and at the Bluff. They do. And you there. Say about the Donner party. What? Donner. Um, Donner. Who are we eating today? So you guys, uh, you guys walk through because you are known. You do have papers. You are legitimate now. And as you get to Donner's Ward, um, sorry, you guys were going to Aesir's Bluff, right? Yeah. So you guys, as you get to Aesir's Bluff, standing outside is Drazda, the high priestess, uh, and the daughter-in-law of the ruler of Fridfiel. And she says, oh, I love it when people all get here at the same time. That way I can give out news just once. So you have all asked of my daughters and my research assistants difficult and complicated uh, questions. And she says, however, because my daughter is so intelligent, she has managed to answer exactly those questions. First and foremost... Gregor, since I was required to find the instructions as to how to find Brokar and Sindri's hammer, the cost will be you retrieving the hammer for me to repair your staff. I would imagine Gregor probably waves yes, yes. Just tell me where it is. And she says, we'll get to that. Ogmagni, do you have any idea what you're holding in your hands? A hammer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, actually, it, it uh, answers it's... as as far as I can tell. It's only responded uh, to being called Giant Spain. Well, th from there, I don't really know. This is not an inaccurate name for such a hammer. This hammer is of a type created only for Thor's Huskarls themselves. This is a hammer of thunderbolts. Now, you've only activated the barest minimum of its powers. <clears throat> to How do I unlock the rest? So, <clears throat> he lo she looks at you and she says, you are Paladin of Thor, yes? Yes. What? Uh, give me a, go ahead and give me a history roll. Okay. Uh, with advantage, please. Okie dokie. Because that'd be awful. It's 
while they're doing the roll, bad info, welcome. I hope you enjoy the rest of the stream. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, Stewie, for taking care of us. Yeah, buddy. Mm -hmm. Well done. So she says, she up. says, oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> just, I'm like doing three different things. Just as Thor requires <clears throat> Meginajord and Yarn Griper to fully access the powers of Mjolnir, you require gloves and belt of your own. To truly access the powers, you must go and find yourself a belt of giant strength and gauntlets of ogre power. Okay, so he's not going to be calm when he hears this. He's, like, really super excited. I, I mean, I, um, I imagine he is. He's like, yeah! Yeah, he's, he's literally running around in a circle. He's like, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it! Like, Igor's he's like... like he, so did I, sir. Thank so you, did I. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was something special about me. Like, Yes, yeah, sir. Very special. About this isn't about you, Igor. Hammer. Shut up. Hey, hey, hey. People, people <laughs> like Igor. I'm trying to tell you for months. He's so nice to you. He's, 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 he's joking. He's not being serious. So, you do have to go find your own now. And she says, and conveniently, she now looks at Gregor, I am about to send you to the greatest hoard of treasure ever known. I assume Kasim is now listening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as soon as the word treasure escaped uh, this person's lips, I was like... <laughs> and it is the it is a place far in another realm called the Brass Citadel. Cassim is literally on the other side of town. Um, <laughs> and he heard like treasure. You just you just see him running full speed. So, he so she out of says, nowhere. long ago. Uh, actually, uh, anybody who has knowledge history, go ahead and give me a knowledge history roll. I do. Can I do it anyways? Because I'm Your from this location. Yeah, I'll allow it. Okay. And I won't even give you a disadvantage. Yeah. I only York. got a 27. I only got a... Yeah. Igor's good at history. All right, so Igor and... Fucking Delvin somehow, you know this. Um, <laughs> Del <laughs> he read it. He overheard it. So Delvin read a book. And e well, so Delvin, you know that dwarves are the oldest race in the Nordic lands. Older than dragons. Older than Jotun. They're the oldest race in the, in the Nordic lands. Igor, you know that in some Igor textbooks, it is theorized that dragons come from dwarves. What? Wait, what? I mean, it makes sense. So, she tells you, do you know the story of Fafnir? And Igor's like, yes, Murphy, of, co of course. <laughs> and uh, she says, yeah. Fafnir cool. was the first red dragon a dwarf so consumed by gold fever that he became a scaled worm to protect his treasure Regin his brother was the first silver dragon and he became a dragon by consuming Fafnir's heart after Sigurd the first Jotun hero killed him Fafnir has been dead for centuries. We don't know where his... We didn't know where his hoard lie. But my daughter managed to find a map to an ancient dwarven citadel in the Circle of Fire three months north of where we currently are. It'll take you beyond the boundaries of our Jarldom. Interesting. <clears throat> Uh, thank you so much for the subscription, Bad Info. Apparently, Bad Info is John. Colin knows I them. Know them. No. Uh, so no. she says, it'll take you beyond the, 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 the boundaries of the actual Nordic lands into the wild lands beyond. It'll take you outside of our, <clears throat> of our Jarldom, and you'll be entirely on your own. Ah, as we ever are, she my said, lady. It's not so bad up there, I imagine. <laughs> I'll make sure to pack an extra she skin. Said... <laughs> At first she thought you said meant water skin, and then she realized who you were, and she's like, oh. <laughs> oh, that skin. <laughs> oh. So she says, 
In Fafnir's Horde, you will find Brokar and Sindri's blacksmith hammer. And with that, I can repair Gregor's staff. You should also find Very nice. a belt of giant strength. And then after that, so, the uh, gauntlet will so be we're, required. we're leaving right now, right? We're leaving right now, everybody. No, I don't believe that we're leaving right now, though. We have supplies to obtain. We need to make sure the cart's in working order. Tomorrow, if you would like, we, we can leave the We have debts to collect. She, she also says, Dragon's hordes, even when left unguarded, have a way of attracting other things. You may not face Fafnir, but something will definitely be sitting upon that horde. If you are successful, there'll be wealth beyond your ability to carry it back. Even a portion of that horde will make you the wealthiest party in the Nordic lands. Well, it sounds like we should bring an extra cart then. Can you get another one of those magic bags? Um, uh, possibly, so, actually, yes. Now that you guys have heard what it is that you guys are going to do, uh, do you guys have any questions about draconic history in uh, in the Nordic lands? Up here, there are three types of dragons that are well known. Red, silver, and white. White are beasts that evolved into dragons. Red and silver come from dwarves. Would Og Magni be able to relate, as was stated, Sigurd with the armor that he's wearing? Oh yeah, you know that you're wearing the armor of Sigurd. Uh, you don't know if it's, like, his last armor or the armor that he killed Fafnir, but you know that this was one of Sigurd's armors. Totally the armor that he killed Sig that he killed Fafnir in. I'm convinced. <laughs> I mean, it, protect it protects you from crits, which is pretty helpful against a dragon. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty magical now. So, <clears throat> what is it that you guys want to do as you guys start getting ready for this trip? It's going to be a longish trip. What's... Supplies... Um, actually, yeah, supplies. I want to. I do want to see if we can actually get another bag of holding. Uh, if anyone has like a magical shop, or if any of the uh, gnomes might have there anything available. There are bags available. of holding available. Um, they are kind of at a premium right now, as everyone's getting ready for war. Give me one second. I'll get you a price on that one. Okay. Um, give me a knowledge arcana roll to see if you know how much they usually run, give or take. That's a 19. So you know that typically... If, if I know how much a bag of holding is. I give me a second because I always lose the fucking page that I have my prices. Okay, so... Um, you know that typically they're not more than 500 gold pieces. Uh, oh, no, that's a, that would be a 20. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting that I have to double my proficiency. There's a way Bonus. to do it. And I'll, I'll mess around on your character sheet later. So you go yeah. into the, uh, the merchant's district, and you find a magic items shop. Uh, and when you walk inside, you see that the shop has nine-foot ceilings. That's very tall and, for uh, here. And you see a Jotun woman with blonde hair. And she says, how can I help you? Uh, Igor, at his, it, with all of his very best charisma. Oh, uh, good evening, my lady. I have been sent here by my lord, Sir Gregor, uh, to acquire a few different items, if at all possible. Uh, first off would be a bag of holding. Hmm. We are going to be going on a long adventure and require supplies that won't dwindle so easily on the trip. So she kind of looks at you over and she says, so bags of holding are um, are good. They're, they're very useful. However, I have something that you may like more. Ah, I'm always looking for something new, my lady. I have one and only one handy haversack. Oh, very interesting. How much would the handy haversack be going um, for at the moment? Because of its price, it's not in as much demand as the bags of holding. I can let it go for 3500 She means 3500 gold? She means 3500 gold? Uh, remember that it's a rare item. 
Rare items are priced between 500 and 5,000. Think about how much we can get in there. So the handy haversack is, I think, three bags of holding in one. And how much? much That's what what I'm looking at, because it used to be the opposite. Bags of holding used to be like four or five uh, handy haversacks. So this is, each of your side pouches can hold 20 pounds, and the (laughs) middle one can hold 80 pounds. Actually, let me double check that I'm not overpricing this real quick. Oh, no. The bag of holding can hold much more. Yeah. Yeah, a bag of holding can hold... A fifth edition bag of holding is way better than the handy haversack. Why the fuck? That's why I'm like... Because an uncommon... Because bag of holding is an uncommon item. So why the fuck is it this way? So I'm like, wait. I'm trying to figure out why this is priced this way. You know what? I Fuck that. No we're going to we're going to we're going to fix this real quick. They we're we're going to fix this bitch right here. So the center pouch of the backpack is a bag of holding. And then the two side pouches are as big as the center pouch that it says it has. Nice. Okay. And how much let's, is that? Let's how bring it down to 3000 even. 3000 mm-hmm. bags of holding. How much do you The bags need? of holding right now are going for 2000 even though they're normal about 500. Jeez, how much? Uh, how much did we gain, uh, Julio, from that last adventure? By uh, the way, not a lot actually. We gained uh, significantly less than uh, we have in the past. Uh, it was a total of five thousand. I still have not disbursed party cuts though. Just hey, if you if you bring the idea to Delvin uh, that uh, you well, need, yeah, I feel like that this is like an everybody thing. So if we all yes, kind of uh, Delvin will literally yeah. as soon as you tell Delvin that. There's a bag that can hold more stuff than the bag you have. He's like pulling shit out of his pocket. <laughs> it might I think it would be good for is, everybody. And we but, could... but it's coming out of his pockets and it's going in your you, hands. You guys also have a couple of magic items that you can sell. So, oh God, son of a bitch. So, Delvin's. Um, Delvin has his old spear and his old crossbow that he doesn't use. Yep. Uh. uh that he could try and, and grab, get some money for. And then... God damn it. Um, Ashlyn is using everything she has. Both <clears throat> both Ogmagni and Kasim have shields that they're not using. Yep. I could use it, though. Because I can use my hammer one-handed when I feel like it, and it gives an extra two. Like it's it's extra. I mean, I'm not protecting. saying you're wrong. I'm, I'm you're, you're not wrong. It's just it's a, it's a yeah. thing. Uh, How much is the shield going for, by the way? The plus one shield. So plus one shields are uncommon, right? No, they're the next one up. They are. Yeah, they're uncommon. I think they are uncommon. So they're going yeah. for about three hundred a piece. It's a dwarven yeah. citadel. They they do pretty decent with with having. Definitely not shields. worth selling at them. Yeah. Um, I will say that also while you guys have been gone, you also earned an extra uh, a thousand gold pieces for the party, or for Kasim through Cardin's efforts. So that brings us to six thousand from this latest adventure. I mean, the last one gave us thirty-three thousand, so this is a significant step down. Thirty-three thousand. Yeah. Thirty-three hundred. You mean? No, thirty-three thousand, considering uh, all the yeah. gemstones and all the the stuff that. Well, that's true because there wasn't really loot in this one. You guys haven't yeah. had loot yeah. in the last two adventures. I haven't really needed it. Um, but that's okay because your next one will also be a shit ton of money. Yeah, that's why we're putting in a lot of money for this thing so that we can take back even more money than what we spend. True. But yeah, the the deal with the the guild was that they would pay us uh, 1500 uh in advance and then uh 3500 on successful return with proof yada yada yada. We have the guy, we have everything. So So, the, so you get yeah. 3500 for that. Yeah. Yeah. Plus the 1500 from the beginning, there's a total of uh, 5000 plus that extra 1000 that you said that card uh generated. So the 1000 is profit. The, yeah. the the criminal endeavor actually takes a shit ton of money that goes in and out. Oh, so that's for me. <laughs> um. So, do you guys want to buy the haversack? 
Does yeah. the group want to purchase the haversack? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. We can use group funds for it. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> you guys also want to buy we... two carts. How much I, is the actually, haversack? You know what? Sorry. The haversack was uh, three thousand, I think. Yep. Three thousand. So, um, Rurik and Drazda actually supply you guys with two carts and uh, giant rams to pull them. Oh, very nice. While we are still here, I want to talk to the no the first gnome that we talked to when we were searching for Tomas. I mean, uh, Somat. Somat. Okay. Um, because she was building like gliders and stuff. Yeah, she was. I want that rivet gun. I want a way to put it on an arm. Like your arm? Yeah. So she says uh, it'll take me some research. Uh, leave. Oh yeah, I don't. I don't expect it to be done in like a week. Leave it like, here with me, and, and when you guys get back, maybe we'll have something. Yeah, give her measurements of like my arm or whatever, and like just stuff like he he just like when uh, uh, Igor was mentioning to him about the the bag, just stuff just starts coming out like gems and stuff. They may not all be his. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not saying. So you start that pulling out money, are... and she's like, "No, no, no. You you gave me the rivet gun, and I'm gonna use that for other prototypes. I'm happy to do this work uh, for you." In the meantime, uh, Igor's looking through his bag like, "Where did I put that rivet gun?" <laughs> There should be at least one left. We threw like three of them in there, man. Uh, yeah. So, so Igor's getting. Igor is talking to uh, to Gudrun, Elsa's daughter, who's the uh, the the largest magic items emporium here in town. Uh, you notice that the haversack is of of Jotun, a giant make, and has giant runes, and that's how the enchantment is bound to it. Uh, Kasim, right. is there anything that you're looking to pick up? Uh, I do not have anything at the moment. Okay. Augmagni. Well, two things. Uh, I want to see about getting, as I said, about $300 worth of diamonds, or wherever I can locate that at. I don't think it's going to be at the magic store. Uh, no, you can just go to the Miner's Guild for that. Yeah, I figured. And then, obviously, I have to go to Donner's Ward, so I can present the head of that mechanical dragon put it up on a pedestal and, and do a quick prayer so that... Uh, you, you walk in and uh, Ruick, the the high priest there of Donner, takes it. He's like, good work, good work. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you, you know, you continue to get gain the blessing of Thor and, and, your, and your glory continues to spread. It's all that matters. So, that night you guys have dinner with Arn, the... Uh, the Jarl of Bin Hala. And he says, <clears throat> you guys are leaving on an adventure, but you're going to be gone for a couple of months. That should give us enough time to gather our forces. Um, when you're done there, head directly to Bin Hala. We'll meet you outside the city. Has there been any word from my people? Uh, not as of yet. It's a fucking... You, I've shown you the map. You, it, it is a long yeah. flight for that poor bird. Well, if it didn't want to fly far, it shouldn't have had wings. <laughs> um, so you guys have... Essentially, you guys you guys spend the evening eating dinner and you're discussing the attack plans and the dwarves are giving X amount of people. Uh, you know, you, you guys are, are ready to retake things. Uh, you also fat managed to get some help from the actual Alfar, who are always too happy to... Ki to uh, to fight their dark cousins. No one likes the dark elves. <laughs> also, I'm sending you some uh, items that I'm... If you could send me prices for this that I would talk to her about as well, by the way. Yeah. I thought you already had this ghost lantern thing. I don't. I have a lantern re revealing. How many, how many lanterns do you That need? shows invisible things. How many lanterns do I need? Uh, I don't know. Probably like five or six. I'm going to keep them on poles on my uh, backpack. Yeah, that's what I'm, that was what I was looking at, too. I'm trying to decide. I'm looking for prices, and I will let you know uh, okay, in between so... sessions. Okay. So this isn't a right now thing. Uh, she says, uh, on the ghost lantern, she says it's going to take her a little bit. She'll, she'll have to actually like shop around. She'll have to talk to her people. 
Uh, the restorative woman, she says she has several jars. Uh, and she says it'll be a uh, hundred. Okay. A hundred per, uh, per jar. Okay. I'll buy two jars. Sorry, 150. I just realized that it gives you a ton of doses. Ceases to be poisoned and cures any disease. Why would you buy? Is there a, um, I don't know what a knife maker would be called. Uh, blacksmith. Like, would that just be a, a, a blacksmith or is there like a, a yeah, person? Yeah, a blacksmith. A, a bladesmith. Bladesmith, right. So. I need very sharp weasel shaped blades. Weasel shaped blades. So you walk into the, into the merchant's terrace and people know that you guys have money because they've seen how you've been living and things like that. And you walk in and like, you are swarmed. By young, short-bearded dwarves. Like, oh, you need to come this way. I have the greatest uh, of, 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 of blades. And the next one's like, no, his blades aren't fit to be, fit to be letter openers. Come to me. And they start like, going back and forth. And then you're like, oh, I need weapons for a weasel. <laughs> they all stop talking. <laughs> okay, so originally I had said weasel-shaped blades. But now, <laughs> a, kni a knife helmet to attach to him. Now, my weasel does need weapons. <laughs> oh my god! I'd never thought about arming the weasel. To be perfectly honest with you, but hey, let's do it. Um, he will be a weasel unicorn. So, like, you you, you go back and forth, and one, like, female dwarf with pink short hair walks up to you. She says, "I'll arm your weasel." And the weasel pops up over my shoulder. I look at him. What? She says. Does he have? Does he seem like he he, he oh, likes he's, her? He's or? down. He's down. She says for you know? ten gold pieces. I will give you your weasel battle armor. I look at him. Give him the eyebrow. He's like, you yeah, down? we're down. All right. Reach in the pouch. Um, two things. She gets one of the rosettes, but this one has a weasel carved okay. in it instead of a rose. Um, and uh, she said ten gold. Uh, I. So that's one platinum, right? Two platinum. Still. Oh no, it is one platinum. Sorry, two, two plat electrum. Right. Um, a platinum piece and the rosette. She takes it. Um, she says, "I appreciate customers that pay the full amount in advance." Uh, now we may need to leave uh, we're probably going to need to leave before you can finish this and I have no problem with that uh, and I'm going to walk with her towards wherever her shop is um, and I, I have some other ideas about things Okay. Uh, you see that her shop is like full of wild designs she actually cool. makes uh, battle rager armor which is like serrated bladed armor that dwarven barbarians wear it's pretty cool I see. Uh, uh, throwing deck is what I'm actually thinking that? about. Also, uh, real quick, would Ogbagni actually listen to Igor now about what the hammer does? Mm, probably not, still. <laughs> Why? Oh, actually, um, I changed my mind about needing something. Um, I do have my next tattoo in mind. Okay, so. what do you got? Um... Trying to get the Shadowfell brand. Okay. Uh, the staff, she also doesn't have one in, st in stock. Uh, I know, and you can't use it. Okay. I can't. But, uh, yeah. We have wizards. We can okay. trick things. So, so for... Where'd you for... send me the tattoo, by the way? Just a sec. Uh, let me see if I can find it on here. Should I post it on the... Wait, it's not showing up. You can post oh, it on the there's... Discord. You can post it into... Yeah, you, have, you have options. Alright, how do I post to chat on... Uh... Skype? 
and roll 20. Uh, you should just be hit the chat button and type down yeah, the bottom. Yeah, it's got a little chat box. Got another one. And I didn't mean to send that to you twice, Rook. I don't know how that happened. I'm sorry. Right. Did I accidentally not send it to you? No, you were reading it, so I did send it to you too, Stewie. I don't know what happened. Uh, your overpowering love for so, me sent it. Yeah, David, you can get all of that stuff. Let's say that you spend 50 gold and you have all of the thief related gear that you that you need we'll make an exact list of what it is later uh, i'm yes i'm going to say right. that, that uh, card in actually is the about. one that helps you find everything you need okay cool my question to you will be as a dm how that interacts with my um my ability to hide the last one we can we can handle that later. I'm not I'm not asking about it right now, like so as not to hold everything up. But I want to have a conversation with you about, for my education, um, about how that would how those two would interact. All right. Yeah, we can work on that. So, for, so it's rare. Oh God. Um. So. It'll be fifteen hundred for that Shadowfell brand. Fantastic. Uh, now noted, it requires attunement, so that's a thing. Well, here's the thing about tattoos: uh, as long as you have space in your body, all your tattoos count as one attunement slot. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's why tattoos yeah. are cheating. <laughs> why so we're like... gonna work on that later. <laughs> okay. We're, we're gonna discuss this. <laughs> we're gonna discuss that later. Mm-hmm. But Depending on the rarity of the tattoo, it, it just, uh, yeah. occupies more space. So, all right. All right. Uh, but you know, I need to find a way to change the color of chat <laughs> of type text. Because so I is, see, I see uh, what you're saying there. Yes, it would be an environmental action to use one, and what it'll do is cause give you cover, which will allow you to hide. It's like it'll it'll act right, like but, a small obscuring mist or something similar. So I could so I could, I could throw a rope trick right afterwards, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> We good, boys. We good. <laughs> um, Ogmagni, you're in the temple praying. Um, you know, you might be able to buy Gauntlets of Ogre Strength. They're not uncommon. Or rather, they are uncommon. <laughs> oh, uh, I can always go down to the... I'm pretty sure, right? Magic Depot. <laughs> I don't, so I don't you know walk in and, and you see that uh, Igor is still there. And uh, you see that it's a a Jotun woman, a, a fairly attractive I, Jotun woman, actually. I give her uh, the it. traditional Jotun greeting of my people, uh, obviously in in our dialect and everything. So, Probably. So you say that, and she looks at you. She says, "Oh, you're from the coast." Oh, she's got you pegged. Very much so. She says, "I have I have not been that way in many years. My family has lived in Fridfjell for a generation or so." How can I help you? Well, it's... I've heard well, that there's uh, a Jotun hero attempting to claim some glory for himself. Somebody finally has heard of me. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> you see, yeah, I think his name was uh, Ogily Agglefies. I, I don't remember. Get okay, Igor. <laughs> <laughs> it is Igor. Wasn't the hump on the other side? Uh, yes. So <laughs> it is I, oh, obviously, the great Og Magni. Kraken Breaker, I won't bother you with the rest of the names, but it just so happens that uh, I am in control of this, and I pull up my hammer, and it turns out that it is a part of a kit, if you would, and part of that would be Ogre Gauntlets, or Gauntlets of Ogre Strength, and you being a provider of magical goods and services, I was seeing if maybe you had some in your... Romeo D20? Let's see if she's got them. Here's, uh, he's hoping. Here's Brother, she says, I absolutely do have one pair of Gauntlets of Ogre Power available. Oh! oh. And, uh, pray tell how much would it be to purchase those? 500 gold pieces. 
What was that? Did she, did she say that too? Like that was a little weird. How much was it? Five hundred gold pieces. Five hundred. He pulls out five hundred and puts it right down and says, "Okay, is there?" I think you're just like, "Yeah, yeah, no haggling here. I don't need to <laughs> deal with that." So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to your character sheet right now. Yeah. They do make your strength, strength, strength 19. They do. I know exactly what they do because, unlike Og Magni, I've known. Do you know what I the do, hammer does? <laughs> do we, I know everything about it because I had an idea of what it could be, and I was waiting, and I was allowing for something to occur, like a story to be driven. <laughs> ah, stories. You throw those. You throw those back in the jail with which they came from. All right. Yes, you do. All right. And then just characters. <laughs> so, and then just change. Uh, all right, we're revealing so, things. Now more. So, Ogmagni do does two d six plus four damage with his maul. Sorry, yeah, two d six plus four <sighs> damage with his maul. That's fucking awful. Yeah, but his like uh, athletic abilities is a little better. He was he was already a plus three, but you know now he's at a I mean, now he's at a nice nineteen. Ogmagni's kind of a, you know as actually as a whole, you guys are now starting to get to that point where. The party's really getting strong. Yeah. And... I mean, I have two abilities that allows me, first of all, I could already lift as a large because of how he's powerfully built. And then my ability that allows me to not o to, was it a athletics? Uh, it's, an, it's an athletics thing that I get as a glory paladin. And then I can lift double that and do all these other crazy athletic things at like mm. advantage. I like so it. he just becomes like, yeah, he just like pick up a cart and throw it at somebody or something. I mean, yeah, probably. That'd be funny. Um, Throw he the also whole ram to... at them? Yeah, just, here you go. <laughs> you wanted to go, right? Um, he also wants to inquire about uh, where to go to purchase 300... Well, to purchase diamonds. I, I'm in need of, of a fair amount of diamonds. That we're just going to hand uh, wave. You, you go to the Miner's Guild, yeah, you get... The, okay. that's, not even, that's not even difficult. Oh, man. Yeah. We're not even going to do the roleplay of, of him asking that chick... About diamonds, right after he met her and she sold him gauntlets. Like, are you serious? Right now? We're not gonna. Try it. We're gonna pass up all that possible storyline. Oh my god, he's the most handsome of the group, anyways. But um, is he? He he also wants to see about getting a uh, a standard made. Uh, obviously, a a uh, a flag for him and his crew so that they can, you know, in the future when they ride off to battle. So you you go to ye old Fiverr so someone can uh, design your banner. Yeah. Yeah, ye old kinkos to make me a copy and stuff. Um, like that. Ye old kinkos. <laughs> Thanks, I hate, I hate it. it. So you guys actually, as a party, so you have the two carts, you have Sigurd the dog and Scotty the mammoth as you guys ride. It's it's a it's it's a it's a care it's a menagerie, you know, <laughs> that you guys have going wonderful. on. And they have, and they have a, a whole wonderful Igor. caravan. Um, since since Megan is not here, she's not going to get the chance to uh, confront Declan about being her dad. <laughs> Just imagine Declan always walking around a corner. Like, no, I'm good. Um, so, uh, Kasim, you spend the rest of the day getting tattooed. Like, that's your thing. Yep, sounds about right. I mean, uh, a rare tattoo is an entire sleeve, so... Yeah. Uh... Also, I'm gonna buy every tool yeah, that's set. Fine. Go for it. Standard, standard DMG prices for that. Yeah. Oh yeah, bad info. Yeah. Ogmagni is a paladin, and his mount is a war mammoth, the traditional mount yep. of the Jotun in the Stormbreaker tribe. And it might become a bigger mammoth or a flying mammoth, depending on how I want to do it in the future. <sighs> a flying mammoth <laughs> sounds terrifying. Uh, it's so much. <laughs> <laughs> just barreling through the sky with wings. <laughs> now imagine he just walks like old school Rainbow Bright. No wings, just walks. Oh yeah, there we go. All right. So the day passes. Uh, a couple of days passes. You guys gather your gear and all of that nonsense, and you guys have now left Hridfiel. Also, how much are you? Are we doing like? We're not doing, like, actually counting the food. We're we kind are, of just in fact, food, right? because I'm pretty sure at least two of you can create food and water. I can create food and water, and I can also hunt for food because I'm part of a, the uh, the tribe that I took as the background allows me to do that. Yep. So, like, uh, you guys you guys are good at feeding yourselves. 
Um, I'm definitely hand waving food. There will come a time when I might fuck with you guys about it, but but today is not the day. But, right. Yeah, yeah. right. I assume you'll let us know. Um, but you guys, even though we're hand waving food, we're assuming you guys are bringing like camping supplies and tents and fucking feed for the horses and yeah your you, you, your tool sets essentially Igor by himself is almost a fucking cart like he's 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 now a traveling gypsy cart <laughs> of like tools and shit basically uh, yeah with two bags i got my regular bag on my hip right, and then know, i got the haversack he's, he's, he's almost you know he's like you're all packing warm too get your get your knitted sweaters so og magni <laughs> please give me a history roll oh boy Just choosing that one, that's not my best, but. Yep, perfect. <laughs> chef's kiss. Can I take that as advantage? <laughs> <laughs> so chef's kiss. Ogmagony's like, all right, guys, we need to pack furs. We need to pack uh, uh, winter tents and this and that and the other. Uh, you guys are on the road for two weeks. And the ice melts. And gives way to terrible badlands. You see a mountain range of volcanoes ahead of you. And that is where you're headed. Igor looks around. Igor looks, around looks over at Ogmagni. Keeps looking around. It's a very like balmy Magni. summer. <laughs> I want to say that with her. Um, because of the way that you guys are riding... Most of like the small uh, dangers and threats that you might encounter, just fucking don't. <laughs> like you see in the distance, they see Og well, Magni, and they're like, you, you see in the distance, like a, a set of hobgoblin wolf riders see you, and they're kind of like trailing you, but they absolutely do not come anywhere near you, even when you're in camping. Remember when that used to be a problem? That's so weird now. <laughs> like, well, I mean, imagine your standard random encounter would be like six goblins try and jump you in the sleep. Yes. Kasim kills six goblins in one turn. Just wakes up with like spears and <laughs> like, oh, they stabbed me. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Uh, uh, bad info. Oh, Magni can carry one I other mean, person. You're right also. Now. You're also assuming that we uh, that we're not like every night, like sleeping well, under right. protection. That's another thing. I like imagine you guys too, are you know? absolutely book seven, fucking Harry Potter and this shit. Like, ah, <laughs> fucking Mufliato. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, we're just not worrying about that. Um, you guys have now been riding for a month and a half. You know, uh, you you have not seen civilization. Huh. Now, in, 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 in weeks, you see nomadic tribes out in the distance of the hobgoblins and of other natures. But like a city or a road, nothing like that. How about tree? Uh, Any, uh, every tree here talk? looks like it died a terrible death. Like it's a blasted, twisted tree. All right, now now Delvin's getting uncomfortable. Like, you, you know seasonal affective disorder? Del, Delvin's feeling that right yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. Now I'm getting a little uncomfortable. Like, what what, what the actual... Like... Uh, the, only, the only plant life that's alive-ish are, like, scrub bushes. You know, those, those twiggy little bastards that refuse to die. So, like, he has to keep, like, his... his that channel he has to nature that allows him to speak the... the Beast and Leaf, he has to keep that closed. If 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 because they that cannot be a happy existence, and he cannot be hearing uh, that shit. No, like no. nobody's happy right now. Just a lot of screaming. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you guys doing anything special? Anything interesting as you guys continue to walk, or that's just just. Hmm. Can we? Can you just? I don't know. Like a perception check, just to see if. Sure, go for it. This is normal? Like, this doesn't seem normal yeah. at the same time. Like, sure, it gets, like, warm here, but, you know. Oh, can I do a survival check? 
Give me a survival check. Yeah, let's go with that. All right. Have I? Man, I'm I, still rolling that garbage are any, today. Uh, you are rolling. Is that. any of the local fauna like giving off what the fuck vibes, or are they just like, "Yep, life sucks like normal"? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, let's. Can we yell at any of these nomads? Like, hey, what's well, up? Well, let's go. Actually, let's say that on the like at the start of the second month, you finally get <clears throat> a a one of the nomad tribes to like trade with you guys. With these furs. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> I mean, are like they... the furs me and you were gonna wear probably make houses for them. So well, I don't <laughs> need a fur. I, I don't. A solid tent or so. Cold doesn't do anything to me. So they tell I you that a... things have been this way for over a year. Um, there was there was a war a year ago between two dragons. And uh, they killed each other, but the landscape has been blasted and has not has not been the same ever since. It must have been fighting over the over the horde. I am all right. They've they've definitely peaked. My little green ears are <laughs> tell me more. Like what 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 kind of dragons? Like what what all cool stuff happened? Like uh, red dragons. They're the they're the ones that breathe fire. Um, they tell you that it was a horrible fight, and they fought with their armies of of dragons and dragon spawn, and they fought for four years straight. Wow! And that's wow. why this desolation exists. It's also why it's taking you guys so long. If if it wasn't if it wasn't so trashed, it would have probably only been like a Two month walk, give or take. But like your 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 mounts get exhausted, the cart gets damaged, and you need to repair it. You guys have to go slower to make sure that you guys are getting food the way you need to. You have to carry additional water. Um. So the the dragon story goes in the book. It gets it gets written down in the. Oh, book. the 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 bard is like, oh, the the last battle was was. Thousands of soldiers and two great beasts in the sky spewing fire, and the heat from the scaled bodies of the soldiers and the and their leaders scorched the grass, and then the blood that fell, nothing grew again. Uh, the only special thing you're going to be doing, uh, especially after hearing all these things, is I'm going to be okay, testing absolutely. the soil as we go. Uh, so you you see that the soil is acting as if it has been salted. It's a lot of and, blood. Uh, we'll also practice the 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 tracking. Okay. Um, like that's something that whenever uh, Delvin enter, 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 uh, enters a different type of terrain or area, uh, he wants to to note the differences in how he needs to work to be able to follow uh, to track basically okay. as a All hunter. Right. That sounds good. And and he'll take notes on the differences in how things you know interact with different types of soil, like how this sand versus different sand or whatever. So this is uh, or dry like the, cracked earth, the, 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 so it doesn't right. hold um, footprints the same way other things do. But you can mm -hmm. sort of follow where things have cracked the earth. Um, do you guys? Did the map load up for you? Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. So at at the, as the journey comes to an end, not yet. You guys. Enter a canyon, and what you're walking towards is a single, large volcano. But essentially, the ground here has been shattered, and you're walking through one of the crevices, the ravines that have been caused by this. Like, I see two things right here, but I don't see us. Go all the way down. No, I no, see, I see the, the thing. Down. I see this. All the way down. All the way down. <laughs> Oh, oh, by the way, Rurik, uh, my uh, night vision has changed from uh, 160 to 80. Or 60? So, yeah, 60. 60? Uh, 60 feet night vision, not 120 or whatever I had before. Why did it go down? Uh, because I changed the stone eyes of the Dow for the Shadowfall brand. Okay. And that way I can use that room for something else now. All right. 
Sounds good. Plow. Oh man, that's a huge difference for you guys. All right. I mean, we got we probably got another set of goggles somewhere. I mean, he can see. It's just yeah, I still have night vision. It's just not like super long night vision. It's regular. So, uh, as you guys, the no more charming people. No, I'm, I'm not upset about that. I got uh, something else though. That's that's pretty cool. So you guys are in this ravine, and uh, to your left, it is nighttime as you approach. To the north, you see the shadow of the mountain, uh, and it is a it is a steep climb to get up that way. Um, you guys can go ahead and walk. Uh, go ahead and give me three turns of walking as you guys walk through. God damn it. Scroll down. Uh, Gregor, remember that you're in charge of. Uh... Mm hmm. I remember. I'm just waiting for everyone else to move forward. All right. So for those of you who are out there, this map that you're about to see was uh, was from Marvelled Press. It's a damn good map. Uh, it's actually one of the maps that inspired me to get on Incarnate myself and start making maps. Uh, so you guys are wandering about, and off in the distance, you guys see some sort of bridge over the ravine, or through... You, you see a bridge that leads into the mountain. Do you guys see that? Uh, I mean, that's what Stu was looking at originally. Yep, I see it. So, how do you want to approach this bridge? Uh, with explosives. I still don't see it. So. I think... I to, uh, sorry, I had to reload okay. mine. I think we should sneak up to it first and see if there's anything on the way. All right. All right, Delvin, I'm going to move you. I'm going to join Delvin in the scouting this time now that I have some roguish talent. All right, give me a stealth roll. When you when you meet up to Delvin, give me a stealth roll. And Delvin, give me a stealth roll. Where is he... I got you. Plow. There you go. Oh, there we go. Uh, stealth, stealth, stealth. Right above, right above survival. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a 30 because I have advantage. How the <laughs> Well, they really? definitely don't see you. Just, just, just got to be better than me at <laughs> Um, but oh, you okay. see, uh, go ahead and give me perception checks, both of you, to see exactly how much you see on the other side of the bridge. Delvin, you too. Uh, you guys can actually get right up to the edge of the bridge, by the way. With, with stealth rolls like that, who needs enemies? Uh, that should, is, I don't, I don't know if that still counts as... Yeah. Like a regular perception check, I don't think it counts. I think I only get the the advantage if I'm actually trying to figure something out. Okay. All right. I don't. I don't. I have to go back and look it up. Where I still haven't gotten to the bridge. Oh, there yeah, we go. I'm, right, I'm moving cool. you guys to the bridge. You guys are now at the front of the bridge. You guys see six. Um. Red scaled reptilian creatures wearing heavy armor. <laughs> Um, let me see if I can show you just the... I cannot show you just the art. That's fine. Um, they are wearing... Uh, they're wearing plate mail armor, and they've got a long sword and short sword at their side, as well as crossbows. And they seem to be um, watching out into the distance in the direction that you're going. The bridge itself is actually rather long and wide. You can tell it's clearly of dwarven make. And inserted at intervals along the bridge are lights that keep things um, shiny. Hmm. Hmm. 
All right, so um, we see the six dudes. Where? Along the bridge? So they're actually like, at the they... front of the bridge. You see there's one here, one here. I'm not, I'm, not... I'm, not, I'm not getting anything when you say here and here. Hold on. I'm actually going to look through your eyes and see what I, what you see. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's just outside of your actual dark vision. No, they're there. So zoom out a little bit. Maybe that's what's, help, what's hurting you. Okay. So at the very end of the bridge, there's two guys standing next to two statues. and then... Okay, at the uh, rear? That, that'll do it. I didn't see any. Okay. And then there's three more oh. behind them. So I'm sorry, it's not six, it's five. Um, you guys have never seen anything like this before. These are uh, legit half dragons, not, not dragonborn or draconians or anything of that nature. Mm. Like walking around, Japanese armor, wings out their backs type? Uh, not uh, not Japanese armor, and they don't have wings. But you get the feeling that they, okay. they probably, they almost certainly have, you know, breath weapons and, and draconic type immunities and, and that sort of, and that sort of issue going on. All right. Um, I'm going to head back. You stay here and watch. I'll just let everybody know what's going on and bring them up to about here where I think they should be safe from if you don't crying dragon if eyes. If you don't want to make a stealth roll, you're going to have to stop here. If I don't want to make a stealth roll? Like if you don't want the party to have to make a stealth roll, that's where you're going to have to stop. Right where I'm at right here, right? No, you see the line that I just drew? Oh, okay. Oh, hmm, okay. Remember that they are, All right. these are guards on watch. Like, they are actively, like, keeping an eye yeah, on yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. I just thought that angle would be far enough, but I guess you're right. Like, I, if I look at the, the thing, that angle would be in their their field. All right, yeah. Um, I'll tell them to stop here, and then we, so we can come up with a plan on how we're going to approach this. Um. Because it's almost certainly not going to be easy for us to sneak this one. Um, yeah. Well, like even with having another person to to be in place before we, you know, engage, um, they have really long distance before you know we can get to them. The and, main uh, concern that you guys should like, all be thinking about. It's almost pro probable. That they have breath weapons. The the main concern that you guys should be thinking about is that they do have crossbows, and if any mm -hmm. of them escape into the tavern, they can let other people know you're coming. Yep. Hmm. Like I mean, I I could possibly incapacitate one or maybe even two before you know whatever, but there's no way we take all of them out. Mm -hmm. I mean. And we're sure that they're going to be attacking us when mm -mm. we see them? Mm. Uh, you are not certain they're going to attack you, but they are red dragon kin. Not exactly the nicest of folks. Yeah. Which, you know, that's, that's racist. Maybe, maybe, maybe they're the nicest dragons. You don't know. Profile. They profiling! Fucking anytime someone brings up uh, profiling, I can only think of the scene from Get Smart. He's a uh, uh, and Hathaway's like, oh, there's a bad guy behind us. Steve Crow's like, Agent Ninety Nine, that's profiling, and I won't stand by it. He looks back, he's like, oh, that's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, how you guys want to approach? You, you, you guys can draw on the map and make make plans. That's also a thing that you can do. Uh, is there any way of Mm. So two two potential options is you take out the lights, but then that's not yeah. sure that they would all come out after us. It might even result with them. And they might have di night vision. Going. Yeah, that too. What about going underneath the bridge? You could do that. Like literally, that was my whole point. That we need to, we may need to figure out a way to avoid this encounter, as opposed to. Yeah. I mean, you can definitely take Weaselums up there and see what he sees. See, so we can find any alternate entrances. Yeah. 
Because, I mean, I'm all for just barreling right in, but. Yeah, I, I mean, you're tough and all, but I'm two rounds of free firing from crossbows? Yeah. It's like castles or anything, man. That might hurt. Just saying. So are we trying to get into this yeah, cavern, or? Yeah, that's where we got to go. Well, I mean. From what I'm hearing. Yes, this is the this, right. is the this is the entrance to the dwarven citadel that Fafnir took over to create his lair. Yeah. Can we? I mean, you guys can take a day and just spend a day searching the cliffside, see if you see anything. That might have been. Nope. A, that might I'm, be. A... I'm gonna let my man's go. Go. Who is even stealthier than I am? Who? And is even stealthier than, than possibly uh, Weston. Is he? Does he use my numbers or his own numbers for um? The weasel. He uses his own numbers. Yeah. But he always has advantage because he's tiny. All right. I just want to give him a, a quick stealth check and see if he can. Uh, Where do you want him to go? If he the weasel on the map for you. I uh, want to get a better look at the room. Per se. Okay. Like, I guess for want of a better word. There he is. You got him. Great movie. The room? Yep. All right, so give me that stealth roll, and let's see oh, where hi, this is going. You should have access to his character sheets, though, by the way. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, so I click on his character sheet, and then his... Oh, yeah. Uh, stealth... Wait, is stealth on there? Like, do I get to click the... You should have a stealth roll. Mm-hmm. So... Let's yeah, he's got stealth plus five. Athletics. There it is. What do I have to put in there? It it I see the role. I don't see. No, if you just click in ability. So when you open his character sheet, mm -hmm. if you click the stealth plus five, it'll roll for you. I gotta find stealth plus five. Then sorry. That's fine. If you want, I'll roll this one while you search for it. Twenty one. He's doing just fine. All right, so where do you want to where do you want him to weasel to? Uh, into the room that the five guys are in. Okay, five so go guys. ahead and give me some walking. All right, I can do that. Well, because I, I still didn't find the. Um, the rest of you, by the way, are sitting, you know, s semi nervously with the with the carts. Um, I'm gonna actually walk you up to that yellow line where we said you were safe. So this is a pillar. He can, can he get to the other side yeah, of the pillar to get into space the for him there? Okay. And uh, it should be about here. He oh, I don't want to get that close to that dude. About here is, is close enough. Did, did, uh, his vision didn't change, though. Oh, God damn it! I forgot to give him vision. That's on me. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Vision. Does he have night vision? I don't know. He might not. I can't imagine a world where vision where, where they don't. But he doesn't. He does have advantage on shit, though. Yeah. All right, you should be able to see now. Okay. Um... And the entrance is this artwork right here, right? So, no, there's a... You guys can't really see it, but right here, you see where I just pinged? There's mm -hmm. a stairwell going up. There's another one here. And then just barely out of his sight, there's a door uh, right here. And another door here that he can kind of peek his head around because he's got a flexible neck and all that jazz. <laughs> so there are four entrances, essentially, on this. Two on the western wall, one on the northern wall, one on the southern wall. Um, and there are only five guys, which is plenty. You do see plenty of supplies there in the background. Like These, these guys look like they don't do uh, guard changes with, with whoever's inside. This is where they hang out. Um... <clears throat> The weasel, is, you know, you're looking through the weasel's eyes. You see that this place is a much older dwarven citadel than Tridfiel, where you've just been hanging out. But every inch 
of the fate of the wall faces has been carved and there's runes and there's bas reliefs and there's just history you see it here uh is he still within 100 feet of you by the way remember that that's a thing also that we gotta Wait, what happens within 100 feet of him? I didn't 100 hear that. Feet is, he has to stay you have to stay within 100 feet, feet for him to be, you'll be able to see your see through his eyes. So I'm going to move you up uh, two squares. Okay. Um, all right. All right, bringing him back and, and debriefing uh, the crew. I had to talk him into it because he's ready to fight. Like I'm like, you don't even have your armor yet, bro. Like, chill. He's ready. He really is, man. He he thinks he's a soldier now. I mean, he fought some shit he, last time. Yeah. yeah, he did. He popped off some shit, and he was ready. Um, but now he thinks he's like, you know, he he was trying to see where his cut was of what Delvin got, and like, whoa, whoa, chill, Bill, chill, Bill. You ain't you ain't a full party member yet. So you don't get a cut. What is it that you guys want to try and get done? Like, we're 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 sitting here. That's this is the current question. Do you want to try and run in and block the doors? Magni has a mammoth. <laughs> Do you want to cast sleep and see if you can get some of them to go to sleep? Gregor has that. That's not going to work. Web. Web might work. We could try and get a web in the room. Yeah. You guys have a couple um, of different options, but the longer you sit here, the more likely it is that someone sees you. I don't know. If I want to start this, A, without uh, the uh, multi-tool, because the best part of Sergio's builds uh, aren't the builds, it's Sergio. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, that's <laughs> that's the important thing to remember. Uh, I, I get you. So you, you, you want to, no you, you, you want to, you guys want to call this one a little bit early tonight and get ready for next week? I personally yeah. would prefer to, because yeah. as much sure. as I have his character sheet, I cannot be Sergio in creativity for what he does. That is true. Mm -hmm. He's the best at what he does, also, and what he does is aggravate the shit out of DMs. <laughs> and 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 we don't have a Megan. And we yeah. don't have a Megan. So, which I really uh, do like. As much as I would like to get into like the fights and things like that, I think it would be best to just call it for tonight. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, before we go ahead and leave for the night, Hopefully. a couple of announcements. Um. There, there will not be a. Total War stream this week because of the fact that I have things I need to attend to on Thursday. The Patreon has almost all of the Chapter 1 uh, maps up for Land of Ice and Snow. So if, if you are a member of our Patreon, you could essentially watch these first episodes and run a party levels 1 through 5 with, with the maps that I've made. Um, if we get to 10 patrons, I will be making PDFs of all those adventures. So then you don't even have to watch them. You just have to, you know, you just have to read along. Um, and that, like I said, you can find all those maps and more at our Patreon, uh, right there, which is 3B Radio. We're going to be doing uh, daily updates until I get all the maps for the first chapter up. After that, it'll be weekly updates, which will continue to have maps that I've used in the campaign, as well as other maps that I'm making, and maps for the other campaigns. All that being said, let's see who we're going to raid tonight, guys. Alright. Oh, there's a mouse guard game, but it's in Portuguese. Uh, That's... There's also Aww. My Hero Academia game, but it's also in Portuguese. In Portuguese. I'm so disappointed. Not that I dislike Portuguese, it's just I imagine that you guys don't don't understand I don't. Portuguese. That's not, a, that's not a thing. So let's go ahead and we're going to raid Portuguese. Portuguese. Man, there's a lot of Brazilians out tonight. Let's go ahead and raid... I got nothing, guys. Someone suggest someone. I have no one that plays D&D. No the, the only person that I have that's on right now is uh, Stephazoid playing Valorant. Okay, yeah. Let's go raid Stephazoid. All right, here. I'll put her thing in the chat. There you are. It's in the right, uh, so Twitch chat. We're going to go raid a friend of the streams, uh, a friend of the stream 
by the name of Stephazoid. Because that's how we all beat... Raid. Raid? No, they don't get a shout-out until we uh, get money. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Did I make a raid <laughs> command? <laughs> no, I didn't. I need to make uh, one. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. It's been a blast. Uh, thank you for the new subscribers. Bad Info Man, thank you for being a great viewer, asking questions, being involved. Uh, we've got a ton of lore that uh, that's out there. Um, and as always, say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gracie. Uh, good night, Gracie.